Hello viewers, welcome to class 10 science. This is Sushmita Nath welcoming you to chapter 6 NCRT class 10 science. The chapter is life processes. How do we know that something is alive? Now say for example we see a dog running, a cow chewing cud or a man shouting or walking or doing something. We know that these are living things. Now even though if you find some animal say dog or cow or a man asleep then also you know that they are alive. How? You can see them breathing, you can see their chest moving. Now what about plants? How do we know that they are alive? We see them green. Some of us will tell say uh, that okay they are green so they are doing photosynthesis they are alive and if another plant you see it is brown the leaves are drooping you may say that it is dead let us take the example of viruses they do not show any molecular movement in them until they infect some cell or they come in contact with some living host and that is partly why there is a controversy about whether they are truly alive or not. They grow with time and then we conclude that yes, they are living. So in other words, we tend to think of some sort of movement, either growth related or not, as a common evidence for being alive. But a plant that is not visibly growing is still alive and some animals can breathe without visible movement. So, using visible movement as the defining characteristics of life is not enough. The maintenance functions of living organisms must go on even when they are not doing anything particular. Say for example, if we are sleeping or if we are sitting, not doing anything, at that time also, the internal parts of the body like the heart, the stomach, the kidney and other uh, body parts, the brain, they are all doing work, they are all functioning. Thus, the processes which together perform this maintenance job of living things are called life processes. Now, why are molecular movement needed for life? You must have seen in your earlier classes also that organisms are well organized structures that is the smallest structure is cell, cells combine to form tissues, tissues combine to form organs, organs to organ system, organ system to organism. They can have all these in the body and these are the components. Now because of the effect of the environment, this organized ordered nature of living structures is very likely to keep breaking down over time. If the order breaks, the organism will no longer be alive. So, living creatures must keep repairing and maintaining their structures. Since all these structures are made up of molecules, they must move molecules around all the time. The basic life processes are nutrition, respiration, transportation and excretion. Now nutrition, it is the process of taking food by an organism and its utilization by the body for life processes. You have discussed this in junior classes also. We will take up this topic later. Respiration is the process by which food is burnt in the cells, utilized, oxidized in the cells for the uh, release of energy by body. Transportation is the process by which food, oxygen, water, waste products are carried from one part of the body to the other. Excretion is the process of removal of waste products from the body. Let us start with nutrition. Nutrition, as I told you earlier, is the process of taking food by an organism 
and its utilization by the body for various purposes like to build the body for growth, to repair the damaged parts of the body and to get energy to do different activities. Life on earth depends on carbon-based molecules and most of the food are also carbon-based molecules. The outside raw materials used by living organisms are food, water and air. Now if we talk about the modes of nutrition, basically there are two modes of nutrition, autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. Autotrophic nutrition is the one in which organisms prepare their own food from simple inorganic substances like carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. These are nothing but green plants and some bacteria who have this autotrophic mode of nutrition. Heterotrophic nutrition. It is the type of nutrition in which organisms get their food directly or indirectly from green plants. All animals, fungi and some bacteria are all heterotrophs. Now this heterotrophic mode of nutrition can again be classified into three main types saprophytic, parasitic and holozoic. Now let us understand these one by one. Saprophytic nutrition. It is also called saprotrophic nutrition. It is the type of nutrition in which organisms get their food from dead and decaying matter, dead and decaying organisms. Now it's not that they di directly start taking the dead and decaying organisms. What they do, they break down the food material outside their body. That is, they convert the dead and decaying material into directly absorbable substance and then from outside their body they absorb it. So it doesn't need to be digested inside the body. Outside only it is digested and in absorbable form they take it inside. For example, mushroom, bread mold, yeast and some bacteria. The second type of heterotrophic nutrition is parasitic nutrition. It is the nutrition in which organisms get their food from living organisms, living host, without killing them. They take nutrients from their host, but they don't kill them. They harm them, definitely, but they don't kill them. For example, you must have heard of the leeches, the lice, ticks, then uh, say even mosquito, tapeworm, roundworm. These are all parasitic animals. There is a parasitic plant also, Cascota, which is called Amarbale. So these are all examples of parasites which have uh, the mode of nutrition in which they neither prepare anything nor they take it out from, take it from dead and decaying matter, but they live on some other host and from the host they take the nutrients. Then comes the holozoic mode of nutrition. It is the nutrition in which organisms take food directly. They engulf the food and then they digest and absorb it. For example, we human being. Then amoeba, paramecium, birds, fishes. These all organisms engulf food, take food inside the body and inside the body food undergoes digestion which is further absorbed. In my next video, we will discuss nutrition in plants in details. Till then, enjoy learning.